Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. This is part 3 of our video about the aerial operations of May the 1st, 1982, the day when the British operations to recover the Falkland Islands effectively began. In part 1, we presented the fighter types used by the two sides in their initial inconclusive engagements. Part 2 described the first hot engagement between Argentinian Mirages and British Sea Harriers. Watch those videos if you missed them, and in this part, we will see the rest of the combat operations taking place on that day. Sometime in the afternoon, the Argentine command received radar reports about landing crafts approaching East Falkland Island, and consequently launched a large airstrike consisting of 12 A4 Skyhawks, 6 Canberras and 3 bomb-armed daggers. They were escorted by Mirage trees and more daggers armed with missiles. The three daggers from 6th fighter group made the Torno flight. They took off at 3.45 pm from San Julian Air Base, armed with two 250 kg parachute retarded bombs. The aircraft were flown by Capitan Norberto Ruben Di Meglio, Primer Teniente Cesar Roman and Teniente Gustavo Aguirre Fajet. Di Meglio led his flight down through the clouds at Jason Islands or Isla Sebeldes and then continued at wave top height north of West Falkland or Gran Malvina, heading east. HMS Glamorgan's radar didn't detect him, but HMS Invincibles did. The Northern Harrier Combat Air Patrol was busy engaging the two Mirages from Dardo Flight near Pebble Islands, which we could see in the previous video, so Invincibles scrambled the alert pair of Harriers to deal with this threat. Three Dagger pilots could clearly hear the radio communication between the two Mirage pilots combating the Harriers. At one point, Lieutenant Fahir actually spotted a Sea Harrier to the south, just under the overcast. This was Lieutenant Thomas who had launched a missile at Capitan Garcia Cuerva and was now looking for evidence of a crash. The Harrier climbed back into the clouds without noticing three daggers. Capitan Di Meglio led his flight around Cape Carisfort and then headed south, looking for warships reported to be 15 miles northeast of Port Stanley. Those warships were one destroyer, HMS Glamorgan, and two frigates, Alacrity and Arrow. They had approached Port Stanley with the aim of bombarding the airfield, and they succeeded in their mission. But this left them exposed to airstrikes. Dagger pilots spotted the three British warships firing their guns, and Capitan Di Meglio ordered individual attacks. Each dagger was to attack one ship. Di Meglio would attack the one in the middle, Roman the one nearest to the coast, and Fahed the one furthest away. The daggers flew as low as they could and apparently surprised the British ships. Anti-aircraft fire was quite light. Dagger pilots dropped their bombs and strafed the ships. In this first Argentine anti-ship attack, all of the bombs narrowly missed.
Underwater shocks caused some damage to Alacrity and Glamorgan, while Arrow was hit by 30mm gun shells. Although clearly visible, all the damage was superficial and only one sailor was wounded. At about the same time, a single dagger with callsign Rubio 2 flown by Primer Teniente Jose Ardiles arrived to the combat zone. He had taken off from Rio Grande Air Base and his leader had aborted before takeoff. Ardiles contacted the ground radar at Port Stanley and he was vectored against what appeared to be a single contact. This was actually a pair of Sea Harriers from No. 800 Squadron flown by Lt. Martin Hale and Flight Lt. Tony Penfold. They were originally stationed southeast of Port Stanley and HMS Hermes now took control of them as Glamorgan was busy directing Thomas and Barton in their fight with Garcia Cuerva and Perona. This is the clash we saw in Part 2. HMS Invincible was directing its two alert jets against the daggers attacking three warships of Port Stanley. All these things were happening simultaneously. Two Sea Harriers and a single dagger were now approaching each other head on. Lt. Hale was leading the Harriers as Penfold's radar didn't work. But as Hale was attempting a radar lock on, Penfold acquired the dagger visually calling targets at 12 o'clock high. A few seconds later, Ardiles spotted Hale's Harrier. British pilots reported seeing missiles being fired at them. This might have been another case of seeing drop tanks and confusing them with missiles as Shafriers carried by Ardiles's dagger had no front aspect capability. But Hale responded by breaking hard and diving towards the undercast. Suspecting that the missile might be an R530, he also briefly opened his air brakes under which Chap was stuffed. This was an improvised countermeasure device used by Sea Harriers in the conflict. Hale bottomed out at 5000 feet and reported seeing the missile going ballistic and disappearing into the clouds. Ardiles was finally alerted that he was fighting two opponents and he went into a hard climbing turn in full afterburner. But he was right in front of Penfold, who was able to achieve a sidewinder lock and launched one of his missiles from within 3 miles. The dagger fell into Chuzzle Sound and Primer Teniente Ardiles didn't survive. After attacking three British warships, the three daggers broke right and escaped northwest at low level and supersonic speed. After passing the Falkland Sound, the flight leader Capitan Di Melio called for a climb to save fuel. The pilots lost visual contact of each other in the clouds and continued individually. But then they received a warning from the Port Stanley radar that there were bandits behind them. This was the flight of two alert Harriers from HMS Invincible, specifically launched to intercept them. The lead Harrier managed to get a radar lock on one of the daggers, 
but the subsonic British fighter had a hard time trying to catch the fast Argentine aircraft. On top of that, another flight of daggers, the 14th flight, led by Capitan Guillermo Donadile, was vectored to intercept the Harriers. The daggers dropped their fuel tanks and accelerated to 1.4 Mach. Over the West Falkland Island, the Harriers came within 3 miles behind the Torno flight, while the 14th flight was about 2 miles behind the Harriers. But having no radars and looking into bright afternoon sun, Argentine pilots couldn't see the British airplanes. As the Harrier pilots decided to give up on the chase and turned left, the Dagger pilots finally spotted them, but being low on fuel, they chose not to pursue. Apart from the first British attack on Argentine forces on the Falkland Islands, the first day also saw the first Argentine airstrikes against British ships accompanied by fighter cover. Although the fighter cover succeeded in allowing the strike aircraft to attack the three warships, it came at an extreme cost. Two Mirage trees and one dagger were lost. These events had a deep impact on the rest of the war. Argentine fighters had to descend to lower altitude in order to engage the Sea Harriers, but there they were outclassed and defeated. Argentine leadership concluded that Mirage 3, their most capable fighter, was not suitable for the air superiority role. The 8th fighter group flew another 35 sorties in the war, but they were limited to high altitude sweeps, feints, or escorts of night bombing missions by Canberra bombers. All of the daggers were committed to low-altitude, high-speed bombing strikes, in the hope that speed alone would be effective against Sea Harrier interceptions. British pilots, on the other hand, realized that any high-flying enemy fighters could simply be ignored. Instead, they could focus on intercepting low-level strike aircraft. One such intercept took place on the same day when a Harrier shot down a Canberra bomber with sidewinders. But that might be a story for another video. Press the like button if you liked this one. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal if you want the channel to continue producing content. Thank you and keep watching Showtime 112.